Hey everybody, Quint Lear's NewHomeSales.com in Orlando, Florida at the best home building practices summit with legends, Mr. Bob Schultz and Bob Winton. How has the conference been for you, Mr. Winton? It's been excellent. This is uh, our fourth year doing it together and um, I, I couldn't ask for a better partner to do this with. He handles the part of the business that I, I find difficult and I hope that I handle the part of the conference that he, he would find difficult if he did it, but he would really be able to do it anyhow without me. But uh, we do a great job, I think, of giving builders in our target market, which are guys, privately held builders in the smaller range to the medium-sized range builders across the country and Canon and some other places if they're willing to come. We give them probably as much information, if not more, than they would get at IBS. Uh, that's the International Builder Show, simply because I think we have the best of the best speakers here. And we try to rotate the speakers frequently enough that we're, we're getting a little bit of change of direction every year on what we do. And, and then Bob and I are both there every year to make sure that we keep preaching the ABCs of home building best practices. And you know, Bob, you've been doing this, uh, you know, you're the top 50 most influential people in the home building industry, one of the founding fathers of new home sales as it is. You know, what, what does it mean to you to continue this legacy, to make an impact on the lives of people on the front lines in leadership and management? Uh, what does it mean to you? Great question. Well, first of all, to continue that legacy, <clears throat> excuse me, is great to continue it. But as Bob said, we've been doing this together for four years. But prior to that, I would do part when I would have Bob come and do, a, you know, for the sales and market managers and all that. And then he had me come once here, to, and, it, it's, and we looked at each other and said, wait a minute, why are we doing two? Why don't we put our talents together and bring everybody in the company that should be at a place like this, bring them here. And so to, to, to do what we're doing now, I think elevates that legacy and elevates that to a much higher level than I could ever have done uh, without partnering with Bob. I tell you, it's almost overwhelming because if the home building industry was a brain, you would have the left side and the right side of the brain. I mean, you're hitting them from both angles. There's motivation, there's depth, there's metro study, there's homes for hope. I mean, what has it meant to, to hit them? Why from all these different angles? Why not just pick one thing? Well, you know, in truth, when you, you have trying to implement best practice systems and processes in a company, you're really talking about a four-headed monster. You're talking about sales and marketing. You're talking about leadership and financial management. You're talking about construction management, and you're talking about the what I call the pre-construction processes, the purchasing, the estimating, the getting everything ready for the construction guys. And those four things together are without one of them. If one of them are lagging behind, the, the train's going to derail. And so that's what we do. We have four tracks going usually simultaneously after the keynote address in each one of those four areas of functional areas of the business. And we want people to, we price it so that people can bring their whole team. That's what we're looking to do. Well, and what, we, what I think is neat, with you have the sponsors there, but it's almost like the sponsors are the trainer because they're pioneering. I mean, we have um, you know Atlas RTX pioneering the use of artificial intelligence. You have uh, Spec It Up doing some new purchasing things. Talk about some of the sponsors and what they're doing to, to pioneer uh, new fields and new home sales. Well, uh, one, uh, well, there's several of them that are just so in, they're on the cutting edge or ahead of the cutting edge technology-wise from anybody in our industry. In other words, they do this stuff in other industries. And for them to bring that level of thinking and that vision of the horizon into our industry is unbelievable. I mean, they're talking about stuff that we never thought could be done. As a matter of fact, tomorrow we're doing a, a special program called the Sales Environment of the Future. And Mike Moore was here with us. And Mike Moore talked about somebody called Pepper. If you've never heard who Pepper is, Pepper is a robot. Pepper is a robot that sells stuff in malls. And he gave an example of how the robot can do anything a new home sales can do, and they can do it far better and far quicker. They can learn it faster. The one thing they can't do is connect emotionally. And I'm thinking, wow, I never thought about that. And I never thought about the fact that we as salespeople have to be so much better because if a robot can take our job, first of all, they'll show up 24-7. They won't argue with the construction guys. And they're there all the time, and they don't call in sick. And I'm thinking, wow, what and it, what a what a challenge he, he brought to me thinking about that. Thinking, boy, we got to be ahead of that. Robots have their place, but they're never going to replace the good ones. Yeah. Good point. You know, when they uh, when they talk about you know legends like Bob Schulz and you know old old that just means we're old guys have been around and seen yeah. a lot. <laughs> And, you know, sometimes people say, I'm sure they say to Bob, they certainly say to me all the time, when are you going to retire? You know, you've been doing this for 40 years. And, you know, the truth is, I'm not ready to retire because there's so many new and interesting things happening. And, and on my side of the business, we're still building houses the way we did 40 years ago. And that's going to change quickly. And I want to be around when we start directing construction from a control center, like on those TV shows where they, you know, the police departments have all the 
technology that allows oh, yeah. them to see every, any camera in the city. I want to see every, if they can see every camera in the streets of New Orleans, why can't I see every job site that go. I'm on from one control center instead of putting a guy in a truck and driving him around, right. you know, four hours a day to get to various job sites and look at things? And why can't the trade contractors on the site, you know, call me yeah. somehow and get, get in touch with me and have FaceTime instead of, you know, saying, calling up on my cell phone and trying to get, uh, you know, playing telephone tag all day long. So there's things coming, and it's just still too exciting. You know, where I think Bob, I can speak for Bob because I, I know him well enough to think he, he feels the same way I do, and that is wake up every day excited about the business, and we just want to give back. Sure, we're in it to make some money. Absolutely, everybody's got to make, make a living. But we're in it to uh, really give back and help a lot of young people, just like yourself, Quint, okay? And uh, we're just excited when people show up with new technology like uh, Atlas RTX this year and the other guys upstairs. We, we specialize, our sponsors that come here are people that specialize in what I call business management type products. You know, the, the technology products that will help us do a better job of our systems and, and processes. And the guys who are thinking ahead and are looking at new ways to sell stuff, new ways to build stuff, new ways to just make life easier for a home builder because, boy, we need it. We're still doing it pretty much the way I started doing it 40 years ago. That's neat. And we, I think we were talking about it. it the home building industry is not changing. It's just transforming. So I could change, I could change clothes, but if you're transforming, it's evolving and changing and advancing. Transformation happens over time, and what Bob was saying, and a lot of these sponsors have been here for three and four and five years. They're really part of the team, and the beautiful thing about that is when we all come together, they have great innovative ideas, they learn stuff from us about the industry, and I say this is true, Bob, we are all starting as a group to evolve together. Yeah, We're evolving better. together. It gets better every That's year. That's why they come back, yes. and the beauty of it is that the people that come here as attendees, many of them share things. But, but you asked about retiring, and I, I used to get this to my family, my dear sister, rest her soul, she used to say to me, Bob, when are you going to retire? And my answer was always the same. Why would I retire? I've never been tired in the first place. But I want to, you know, I'm a jazz musician, a former jazz, professional jazz musician, and I'll give you the answer that Tony Bennett gave when he was 91 years of age. He, 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 he's still out doing concerts. Tony Bennett does five, ten concerts a month. He does, he does about 50 a year in great demand. He's in great voice and he's in great shape. And somebody, one time, about a year ago, he did, like at the end, he did a Q&A, and some lady said to him, says, Tony, we love you, and everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said, can I ask, how long are you going to do this? And he said, well, well, as long as people keep showing up, as long as I can play with the young guys like this, why wouldn't I? Wow, that's the answer, isn't it? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't I want to come here and work with him and these great people? What else, what else is there to do? Yeah, what, lay, lay around the couch and watch reruns of uh, Seinfeld? I mean, I'm being serious. Like, this makes me alive. And, and to have you here with us today as a feature presenter on the boot camp, I, I, and I knew you were going to be good. I didn't know you were going to be great. I mean, to, to watch somebody like you evolving is like, that gives me power. And, you know, interviewing a bunch of people, nobody says, you know, my goal is to sell lots of houses. And matter of fact, we have Homes for Hope. Talk about, I mean, everybody's talking about transforming, improving, giving back, having passion, um, enthusiasm. Talk about Homes for Hope. Oh. Homes for Hope, we, uh, they came in about four years ago, five years ago on a client recommendation. And I didn't even know that they knew Bob well and he was working with them in some areas. So they came in and did one of our... A very early programs and best practices here and they, and they just made a, a real impact on the audience and you could see today that from that first meeting until now uh, 33,000 families have had their lives improved by the building that was taken place by builders that were basically introduced to Homes for Hope here at the at the program so I can't say too much about them they'll always be here Homes for Hope will always be here as far as we're concerned to you know really bring us back to you know, this, everything's important uh, that we do, and but we get so caught up in the, the business sometimes that we don't realize that staggering thoughts like, you know, 60% of the world's population are existing in the less than poverty level. Yeah. And what can we do? What little bit we can do, we should be doing and giving back. And, you know, it's really easy, to be honest with you, to, to do at every level that the Homes for Hope makes it easy for you. So we can't, you know, I mean, they're the stars of the show. Right. Yeah, and, and thank, I was going to say, you know, and Bob, and, and you're, you're both kind of the stars, the legends out here. The one, oh, there's Bob. Let me get a picture with Bob. Let me get, but let's talk real quick about the unsung heroes because this is like a well-oiled machine. I mean, you've got Peggy behind the scenes. I, she won't get on my program. I've tried a hundred times. She's too humble or something. But talk about what it meant to have her backing you up, doing these things, running around, and 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 and, and your son. What, let's talk about that. Max, yeah, um, every, every good 
business, every, in our case, every good educational program, has a, a slew of people behind the scenes that you never hear of. You know, maybe in the only place they ever get any recognition in any industry is in the movies. And that's why the credits at the end of the movies take like 45 minutes to see because, you know, that's a thousand people that, you know, got their name on the screen finally. And that's their big, you know, thing. And, and, but we just don't have a screen to put the credits up to show all these names because they're not only the people that are here. There's people like Carly Bennett who, who's not even here, who, who drove the bus for you know half of the preparation for this, and, and all the speakers that come and show up on their own. You know, and sure, they're they're here hoping to, in some cases, to drive business. And some guys literally come here with no desire or hope to really get business, but literally just to give back. You know, maybe go to Disney World. Who knows? You but you know. But you know, like with Max, the whole—they only get called upon when there's a problem. Where's Max? Where's Max? Where's Max? And the whole trip, he's running around fixing and this, and that should be like the Where's Max show. Um, but talk about Peggy, what, what it's meant to have her here supporting and backing you up. Well, people that know us very well always ask. They know that I work for Peggy, and that's a joke. But I do work for Peggy. She's sort of my guiding light when I went through my uh, my illness. Mm. Excuse me. <laughs> she was there every step of the way. One foot in front of the other. And I know Nancy's like that. You know, uh, it's like be every great man or every man is a great woman, but it's a partnership. And she makes me sometimes feel like I need to be better. And she encourages me to be better. And then when I'm better, she says, you got to do it again. So she means the world to me. And she does so much stuff, like you said, the stuff you do that I don't want to do. She does stuff that I would have no desire to do. Her attention to detail and the napkins have to match the wallpaper and the thing and it has to be this. And I go, she goes, for those it matters, it matters. Yeah. That's what I love about her. Yeah. Yeah. Peggy it, is great. Matter of fact, uh, I knew Peggy before she yes, was married to Bob. Right. Um, you know, and so, matter of fact, I, I have to admit that I went up to Peggy and said, do you know what you're doing when she was getting ready to get married to Bob? <laughs> Because we were friends, we both worked at the National Association yeah. of Home Builders back in the 80s yeah. together. So, no, that's a joke. She, she definitely knew what she was doing, but she's a wonderful person. And, and she's been doing this sort of support for me, and not only at this program with Bob, uh, you know, Bob participating, but all the way back in the 80s. She used to take care of all my travel and where I was going and other well, that's things. Right. That, yeah, things. yeah, yes. absolutely. People like, here, you, can you go, and she go speak in Phoenix, and everything was like taken care of. Yeah. Just it was all done. But back, I want to say something about the Homes for Hope. Uh, I've, been, I've been on the board of Homes for Hope now since I met Jack. But, but some of the things about the Homes for Hope, like Bob was saying, but the, the whole idea of the builders doing a Homes for Hope is they build a home, they get their subcon... It, there's, there's multiple uh, aspects to this. They, it's better team building for them. Gives them a, but what happens is they build the home, and the money that is generated is revenue and profit, and a lot of people contribute. So there's some developers that contribute to the home side. Yep. That money goes to Hope International. So when you said... This, so that money goes in... And it's used for micro lending, loaning people fifty dollars. Can you imagine? I'd like to start a home building company, and I need five million dollars. No, I want to start. A, I want to buy five chickens instead of three, so I can feed my family. How much you need? Fifty dollars. It changes lives. And as you said, just the people out of the builders that have been at uh, best only practices that have done some of them done four and five of them. That money keeps evolving. It keeps growing. What uh, Jack said today: thirty-four thousand families around the world, their lives are affected by the money that has been generated that provided loans to their family members that have been able to build little businesses to feed their families. So that is fantastic. And then last thing, you know, we part of coming to conferences like this, I think this is a translation in training. You know, it's not just coming to see the speakers, but you come to conferences like this to see who comes to conferences like this. I mean, you got VP owners and builders and this, and it's not local people. I mean, we have people coming from all over internationally. Seattle? Canada? Seattle, Tacoma, Washington, Seattle, Washington, Washington. Canada. Guatemala, Monterey, Mexico, Mexico yeah. yeah. So it's truly an international uh, conference. So we're bringing ideas and sharing ideas. And part of the what I get from is after the party, you know, what people are talking, sharing ideas. Anything else that you want to add? And thanks for being on the program. I want to add, I want to thank you for being here today as the shining star of the New Home Sales Boot Camp. Amen. My pleasure. Anything else, Bob? Absolutely no, except to thank uh, the, the guy behind the camera over there That's who's right. been at it for a couple of days and hasn't gotten any recognition. Hey, listen, man, no, the ne TJ Kausler, keep out, an eye out for that guy. Best in the business. Uh, he's a rising star in the media business. I heard you say the other day he was the best in the country, oh. right? Oh. But in the city, he's not so good. No, he, I'm only, he's, <laughs> no he's the best in the business, yeah. No, we got, we, it's, it's neat. So, my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, man.